Cash and Rods, Ultra Series. All right, fishing world, here we go. It is an awesome time of year to go out and have a blast catching fish. I have got my man, Tim Holly with Fishing Guide 365, and we have got the new cash and crappy rods loaded up. We got our 30 seconds ounce jigs loaded up. Tim, we are heading to the lake now. Had an absolute blast out here today. Beautiful day. We got a bluebird sky. Um, here we are. The, the water's a little bit stained. A little bit, you know, a little color in it. But man, we're here working this structure. Tell me a little bit about how we're catching them today. Sure. What we're doing basically is we're we're shooting docks, and and if you can see, uh, this dock right here goes from 15 foot here out in the end all the way up to six inches in, in the front. And, and as I told you earlier, these fish are in a, in a big transition right now. They're coming out of the major creeks and they're trying to move up to spawn. So what we're doing is we're targeting these, uh, uh, these longer docks in deeper water. Typically what I'll do is I'll start from deep and I'll work my way shallow. Okay. And then once we start dialing in the depth that they're in, you really can run uh, that pattern for at least an hour. But what you'll find is every hour this time of year, the fish are changing. Uh, so, um, as you can see, we have floaters up here, we have walkways under here, uh, you have a standing uh, dock over there as well, as long as a bunch of long walkway, and we're going to have to shoot these jigs okay. all the way up underneath those floaters and all the way up well, underneath Well, let me ask top. you about that, because you can see, like, this, this dock right here is stationary. You know, it's got a floater on the end, but everything else, it has pilings. That's correct. And, and you probably got a foot of clearance right there. Talk to me about the technique, because there's so much area up under there to cover. That's right. How are you getting there? That's right. Uh, well, shooting docks is, is not a technique that you can learn in 10 minutes, uh, but it is a technique you can learn in about an hour. Uh, I mean, I bring amateurs out guiding all the time, uh, put their crash and, uh, cash and crafty series rods in their hand. Within about an hour, they get it. But basically, it, it's, it's just a uh, kind of a bow and arrow, a slingshot technique where I always start with the, the bait about a foot above the reel. Okay. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to point my rod to where I want the jig to go. Okay. So if I was going to hit the corner of that dock over there, I'm pointing my rod at the corner of that dock and I'm pulling the jig all the way back. Okay. And then basically this is where it's going to take a little bit of timing. Okay. Because you have to release this, release the bait and release your finger at the proper time to get that low trajectory. Um, what I see happen a lot of times is people will hold their finger too long and, it, and you'll know you'll do that because the jig will go sky high. Okay. okay? okay. Um, if you let it go obviously too fast, it's just going to go straight into the water. It's a timing. So it, it is a timing thing. Like I said, you're not, you're not going to be able to get it in 10 minutes, yeah. but give me an hour or give anybody an hour and you're going to be able to get it down pat. Well, and especially these, these are a 30 seconds ounce jig. It's not like that's really, really heavy. That's where these ultralights load up so well and you do get that full parab parabolic bend throughout the plant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, be before this series rods came out, um, I was actually using your Bass series rods to do it. And you can actually still skip the jigs with those, but because there's so much back bone and there's not as much parabolic bend, the accuracy was just off I just a little bit. So, yeah. you know, somebody like me who's been shooting docks for a long time, I could get away with that type right. of rod. But the, the, the person who just wants to go out, hey, I want to learn this technique. It's, it's a great technique to learn all year. You want to get the best equipment out there, and by far these Cash and Series rods are, are by far the best dock shooting rods I've ever put in my hands. Well, I am, you know, I'm using the six footer. I'm more accurate with the six footer. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody like you would prefer a little bit longer in the six six. You got a little bit more leverage. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it totally depends on what where I'm fishing. Uh, you know, if I have, if I'm fishing a lake where I have two or three foot of clearance, yeah, I'll go to the six six because I don't have to be as accurate. But you know, the water level has actually come up about two foot. It was about two foot lower last mm -hmm. week. Um, so, you know, that's why I said, you know, let's go ahead and use the six footers today because those six footers, just because of the shorter, you're going to be that much more. Okay. Okay. All 
All right, so what I'm gonna show you is the knot that I use. It's the modified Albright knot to tie either my fluoro leader or my mono leader to braided line. Um, one of the first things I'm gonna show you though is a mistake that most people make when they, when they tie this line. Here is your mono leader. Here is your braided line. What I see when people tie this knot, a lot of times they tie their mono over top of their braid and twist it that way. That is the incorrect way to do that. What it's going to do is it's going to have the mono on top of the braid. So eventually as that knot is going through the guides over the course of the day, it's going to wear that out. So what you want to do, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're tying the braid over top of your leader. That way it'll protect that knot and it won't fray and break on you. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our leader and we're going to make a loop, okay? We're going to go ahead and make that loop and then we're going to take our main line, in this case, the suffix 832 braid, and we're going to just basically slide it up through that loop, okay? So hopefully everybody can see that. We're just through the loop right there. And what I do is we're going to pinch that, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the braid around our leader anywhere from four to six times. I, I prefer six, but some people go as low as four. So there's two, three, four, five, six. Now here's what makes it the modified Albright knot. We're gonna go six back down the line. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now this is the key, okay? Once we're done here, our main line, if you can see, came up through the loop. Hopefully you can see that. The main line came up through the loop. We want to send this line in the opposite direction. So if this one came up through the line like that, we're going to send this one in the opposite direction and then we're going to wet it and then we're going to pull it down and if you can see right there that is your modified albright knot that's going to tie your main line to your leader the strongest knot that i've ever found once again uh, as i said earlier worked on a deep sea fishing boat if this knot's good enough for a 500 pound tuna it's good enough for a three pound tackle Next question I also get is, you know, what size jig do you use for crappy fishing? Well, that's, that's a million dollar question. It changes every single day. Typically when I go out on the water, I want to try to get away with the lightest jig I possibly can. Uh, there's several reasons for that. One, I think it looks a little bit more natural when you have the artificials coming through the water. Uh, number two, the lighter jigs always tend to skip a lot better and a little a lot further, especially for amateurs that haven't shot docks uh, quite a bit. The lighter jig is going to uh, be a little bit easier for them to skip. Uh, so I normally start with a 32nd ounce, uh, one 32nd ounce jig. Um, depending on the conditions, whether it's out there, it's a little bit windy today, we might have to up that size um, just to make sure that we get the feel and the, the jig's not drifting too much with the wind underneath those docks. Uh, but I also get quite, asked a bunch of questions, you know, what knot do you tie uh, to your hooks? Um, you know, and I tie a lot of different uh, knots depending on the scenario and the situation. But my go-to knot, whether it be fluorocarbon or whether it be mono, is usually just your simple, improved clinch knot. Um, and tying that knot is very, very simple. You're just going to basically put your leader line through the eye, and you're just going to make six twists. And once again, you can make more or less, but six is usually my go-to. Then we're going to go back through the bottom loop with our tag in, and then we're going to twist it over and come right back through the loop we just created. We're going to pull it relatively tight, but do not cinch it down until you wet it. It'll prevent that line from burning. Pull it down tight. And there's your improved clinch. Slab, what an awesome day. We had a beautiful day out here, out here shooting these docks, man. It's a challenge now. If you haven't done it a whole lot, it is a challenge to get the timing down, coordination down. But man, you want to talk about fun because you can reach a lot of these areas that you just can't get to. You should
sure could. And, and like I said earlier today, I mean, we really had a challenging day. I mean, we've had 80 degree weather, we've had the 30 degree weather, uh, we've had tornadoes last week. Um, so finding these fish was a little bit of a challenge at first today. Uh, but there's always, always, always crappies on docks year round. Whether or not the weather's funky, the weather is muddy, you're always going to find uh, crappies on docks. And I'll tell you what, if you have the right equipment, like these Cashin Crappy Ultra Light Series rods, it just makes the job so much easier. Um, you know, but other than that, I really enjoyed the time. Matt, once again, you made a killer ride for me, buddy. Thank you so much. Hey, absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity to get out here. Guys, this is something that anybody can do. Just get out here, get around this structure, and guys, you're going to have the time of your life because you are going to catch fish.